Introduction. This lead awareness training booklet has been prepared by staff members at PLOS Incorporated. This booklet is designed to accompany a training session to assist in providing an understanding of lead and its properties as well as how to minimize exposure during operations and maintenance activities. The interim final rule for occupational exposure to lead was issued by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, on May 4, 1993. On March 6, 1996, the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, issued disclosure requirements for landlords, tenants, and those involved in the sale of real estate. Lead, what, what is it and where is it? Lead is a naturally occurring heavy bluish metal that has been used for centuries in a myriad of products. Lead is nearly indestructible and is not biodegradable. No known technology will destroy or render lead harmless. Lead has been used since ancient times. During Roman Empire, lead production may have been as high as 80,000 tons per year. The Romans used lead as a lining for water and wine, storage vessels and utensils, and as a glaze for pottery. In 1713, the hazards of lead were first reported by Bernardo Ramazzini in potters who used lead glazing. During the 18th century, Benjamin Franklin noted the toxic effects of lead on printers, plumbers, and painters who use lead in their trades. With the onset of the Industrial Age, the use of lead and lead products increased. It was particularly useful due to its softness and malleability. One of the major uses of lead was as a pigment in paint and a dryer in varnishes and primers. The use of lead in paints has declined over the years. As of 1978, residential paint can only contain a maximum of 0.6% lead. Lead is mined as ore in many countries throughout the world and for use in the following products. Paint, battery, solder, pottery glaze, window glazing, water and sewer piping, gasoline. What is lead containing material? Materials containing 1.5%, 0.5% lead by weight or that red 1.0 milligram centimeter squared using an XRF direct reading instrument, discussed later, are considered by PLOS Incorporated to be lead containing materials. Employees must abide by any signs, labels, assignment, assessment reports indicate, indicating the presence of lead containing materials. Appropriate work practices should be followed to ensure the lead containing materials are not disturbed. Disturbing lead. In the past, maintenance activities such as sanding, scraping, and welding were considered fairly non-hazardous and routine. It is now known that if lead is present on or, or, on or in the surfaces being disturbed, persons performing the work as well as occupants of the area where the work is performed may be exposed to lead. Lead awareness training is required for employees whose work activities may contact lead-containing materials but do not disturb the material during their work activities. Lead awareness training is required at time of hire, during orientation, or before assignment to areas containing lead. Refresher training must be given annually. Where is it? Lead contained in painted surfaces poses the primary risk for lead exposure. Paint, preparation, scraping and sanding, renovation and demolition activities can all generate significant per personal exposures. Leaded paint has been used in many of the buildings on campus. It is most commonly found on exterior surfaces. Lead-based paint was used more in pre-World War II construction than in construction from 1940 to 1978. Use, in lead, use of lead in paint declined throughout the 50s and 60s. Since 1978, the Consumer Product Safety Commission, CPSC, banned the use of lead in residential paint. As a result of this ban, buildings after 1978 are not considered to be a risk of lead, lead contamination from paint. What are the health effects? Lead is recognized as a serious health hazard, not only for those who work with it, but to workers' families, especially to children under six years of age. If lead paint is disturbed, small lead particles can become airborne. Lead then may enter the body by inhalation or ingestion. Small particles containing or contaminated with lead enter the lungs or the digestive tract, where lead is absorbed into the bloodstream. Lead particles may also settle on your skin, hair, and clothing. Eating, drinking, or smoking without first washing your hands after exposure to lead dust can deliver additional lead into your system. Once inside the body, lead serves no useful purpose. It is poison that interferes with the brain, nerves, kidneys, and blood-forming systems. When lead levels become high enough, lead is stored in the bone marrow where it may be released in the body at a later time. The damage from lead poisoning may be irreversible and can be fatal. In adults, symptoms of lead poisoning include headaches, memory and concentration problems, abdominal pain, high blood pressure, kidney damage, sleep disturbances, impotence, muscle pain, digestive problems. Developing fetuses and young children are more at risk for damage due to lead poisoning. Relatively low levels of lead can inhibit the growth in developing fetuses. In young children, lead may cause irreversible damage to the de developing nervous system, resulting in behavioral and learning problems. Slowed growth, hearing problems, and kidney damage are also possible effects. 
We now know that lead levels in the body in concentrations much lower than previously thought can be responsible for many of these problems. Lead detection, how do we know? There are several method methods that can be used to determine if lead is present in a material. The three most common are laboratory analysis. A small amount of the material may be tested, <coughs> example paint chips, is collected and sent to an analytical la laboratory where chemical analysis is used to determine the lead content. This method is extremely accurate. The cost is usually around $20 and results often take two to three weeks. The analytical services laboratory operated by the Engineering Research Institute in the Town Engineering Building can conduct paint chip analysis for lead content. XRF testing. An X-ray fluorescence XRF machine used a radioactive source to excite lead molecules present in materials. XRF testing allows materials to be tested intact and usually produces an immediate result. The XRF will detect emissions from the excited lead particles to produce a result that is representative of the lead present. XRF instruments are quite expensive and require annual replacement of the radioactive source. EHS maintains an XRF testing device that is available for immediate testing of materials that you suspect may contain lead. Chemical spot testing, sodium sulfide and sodium rhizoid test kits that will qualitatively determine if, surface, if surfaces contain lead are commercially available. These kits are relatively inexpensive, $7 for two tests. Some kits may be unreliable while most contain potentially harmful chemicals that may leave a stain on the material being tested. It is important to note that to determine whether lead paint was used in an area, it will be necessary to test all different surfaces in the area. Several different paints may have been used at some point in the past, even though current appearances are similar. As an example, a room may have paint with different lead content on upper walls, lower walls, ceiling doors, door trim, baseboard, window casing, window trim, and window sashes. All surfaces must be tested separately to provide an accurate view of the lead hazard present. OSHA's Occupational Lead Exposure Rule. On May 4, 1993, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA, issued rules governing employee exposure to lead in construction workplaces. These rules became effective on June 3, 1993. The regulation applies to any work where PLAWS Incorporated and or contractor personnel may be exposed to lead or lead-containing materials during the course of their work duties. Employees involved in the disturbance of lead-based paint make up the largest group covered by the standard. Activities covered include, but are not limited to, demolition, renovation, encapsulation, maintenance operations, paint prepping, firing range cleanup. Exposure limits. Airborne lead exposure is measured in micrograms per cubic meter of air, UG slash M cubed. A microgram of, is one millionth of a gram. As a comparison, a penny weighs about 2.8 grams or 2.8 million mil milligrams, micrograms. OSHA's lead standard establishes two lead exposure limits. Both are time weight averages over an eight hour period. Action level AL of 30 UG M cubed. The AL of 30 micrograms per cubic meter of air is the level of airborne lead exposure at which medical surveillance is required for the employee. Permissible exposure limit, PEL, of 50 UG M cubed. When airborne lead exposures levels meet or exceed the PEL of 50 UG, the following provisions must be considered. Engineering methods to reduce the lead exposure, lead specific training, approved work practices, personnel protective equipment, PPE, hygiene facilities, warning signs, and personnel air, air monitoring. What activities involve potential exposure? There are a number of activities that can disturb lead and generate a potential exposure to lead dust. The activities which present the greatest risk for lead exposure include renovation, batteries, demolition, paint, circuit boards, painting projects, interior and exterior, window glazing, plumbing and soldering, firing range activities. Minimize potential exposure. Maintenance tasks may require the disturbance of lead-containing materials. In order to minimize exposure to the individual conducting the work and others in the area, and to avoid contamination plus incorporated property, there are a number of recommended procedures. Most of the recommended recommendations reflect common sense approaches and can be accomplished with a minimum of effort. Find out if the material you are working with contains lead. If it does not, there is no lead hazard. If a material contains lead and sanding or scraping is required, use wet methods or ventilated tools connected to high efficiency particle air, HEPA filtered vacuum cleaner. Use HEPA filtered vacuum cleaners for any cleanup. Use a drop cloth to collect debris. Do not leave lead dust debris so that someone else gets exposed. Work involving lead materials should be conducted where areas are unoccupied. Do not use heat guns, unshrouded and non-HEPA filtered tools, welders on painted surfaces, 
dry scraping or dry sanding methods. Personal protective equipment, PPE, and personal hygiene. Since one of the primary routes of entry for lead into the body is the respiratory tract, the first line of defense is respiratory protection. Avoid breathing any dust that you suspect may contain lead particles. Paint dust on a windowsill may contain lead. Use a HEPA vacuum instead of blowing the dust away when preparing to paint. Do not use a wire brush on glazing channels when cleaning them before reglazing. If monitoring indicates that your work you are considering exceeds a PEL, you must, engineer, you must do engineering controls and or have a respirator to protect yourself from the lead present in the air you are breathing. Another primary route of exposure is via ingestion. Use gloves to minimize contamination to your hands. In situations where a large amount of contamination might be produced by your work, disposable protective coveralls are necessary. Employees shall wash hands to minimize potential ingesting of lead particles when eating, drinking, or smoking. Medical surveillance and monitoring. Initial medical surveillance, a blood sample for lead, is required for those individuals exposed at or above the action level, AL of 30 UG, at any time. Periodic medical surveillance is required when exposure exceeds 30 UG for more than 30 days per year. All medical records are required to be kept at least 30 years. The OSHA lead exposure standard requires that monitoring of airborne lead levels be performed to determine an employee's level of lead exposure. This monitoring is required initially for all employees and periodically for those exposed above 30 UG. EPU <clears throat> three two EPU <laughs> three two EPA HUD and the IDPH also regulate lead. EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, has adopted rules that govern the training required for workers who remove lead, inspectors who inspect for lead, and assessors who determine the relative risk posed by the presence of lead containing, containing materials. The AP, EPA rules dictate how work involving lead abatement assessment inspection must be carried out. Residential lead, the EPA rule provides that as, as of December 6, 1996, landlords must disclose to prospective tenants any knowledge concerning the presence of lead paint in the housing being leased. Also, as of December 6, sellers of housing must disclose any knowledge of the presence of lead paint to the buyer or agent and must allow the buyer 10 days to conduct a lead inspection if desired. An EPA pamphlet is available describing the hazards of lead in the home. HUD, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, has issued rules that specifically govern abatement, inspection, and risk assessment that cover target, federally funded in Native American housing. While these rules only cover target housing, they are the only specific rules available in the field. Therefore, they have been used by a way of reference for many other regulations and guidelines. Housekeeping. To maintain the area to prevent airborne lead and to keep surfaces that you're working on free from lead contamination, use HEPA-filtered vacuums and wet wiping when cleaning surfaces. Wet wiping should be accomplished with wipes soaked with a detergent solution. A final wet wiping of the working surfaces will leave the area on which you have been working free of contamination for those who may follow. Never use compressed air to clean up lead contaminated dust. If employees working immediately adjacent to lead abatement activity are exposed to lead due to the inadequate, inadequate containment of such job, their supervisor shall either remove the employees from the area until the enclosure breach is repaired or perform an initial exposure assessment. Documentation. Lead awareness training should be documented, including dates of training, employee name, and trainer name. Summary. Although lead has many useful characteristics, the health effects from exposure are serious. Moreover, employees, students, faculty, staff, and members of your own family can be exposed if lead, to lead if proper precautions are not taken. Lead-based paint is the primary material associated with lead exposure risk for those working at the university. In addition to lead paint, lead exposures can result from glazing, solder, and other lead-containing materials. Suggestions presented in this publication will help minimize potential exposure to you, your co-workers, co and your family. Knowledge and awareness of the problem are essential to limit the risk of lead exposures.